Hi guys, today we're here making chiles rellanos and I'm really excited to have my sister-in-law here. This is Sandra. This is one of my brother's uh, sisters. I don't know if I mentioned this, my brother's sisters, my husband's sisters. He has eight sisters. She, it's, he's the oldest, and then there's Nelly, and then there's Sandra. So she's the third oldest. And apart in the coughs in the background, my kids are coughing because they're sick today. Anyways, I'm happy that she's here. I haven't made this recipe for a while, and I originally learned how to make it from her. So I've got her here to help guide us through this. The first thing that you want to do, you want to come on over here to the stove, and if you have a pancake uh, griddle, you can use that. That's what I've chosen to use. And I've got my uh, poblano chilies. They're roasting on here, and I'm just blackening them. Once they have blackened, then I'm going to peel off the skins. So we're going to go ahead and let those keep uh, roasting away. And when they're all nice and charred up, we'll come back over to those. But if you want to come back over here. The next thing that we do, we need to get the eggs ready for the batter. And I'm going to have my sister-in-law go ahead and start with that. And I've also got some flour here that I have prepared for the batter as well. So the first thing that she's going to do, she's going to put, she's going to separate the eggs, the whites from the yolks. And the whites are the part that we're actually going to put in the blender, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you need, yeah, you want to put that in here? And you'll want to have a couple bowls because you're separating. And you'll want to have one egg for every chili. So today we're doing four, and so we're going to do four eggs. The reason we're doing four is because not all my kids are fans of this. This is kind of like a more mature. He's fine. He's fine. This is like, you know, kids and chilies. They're not quite there yet. So we're only doing four. And after she separates those, we're going to go ahead and put the whites into the blender. And then we're going to blend them. What speed do you like? Like a higher speed? Yeah. Okay, like on a high speed, and we're going to blend them up until those, until the whites are, are they stiff peaks? It gets fluffy like a stiff yeah. peak. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we're going to, so I'm going to put those in. As soon as those have blended up, we'll be back to show you the next step. Okay, so these have uh, gotten to the point that we want them to be at. If you want to just take a look at that, they're charred up. We're going to put them on a plate. And... There's a couple of variations to how people do this next step. We're just going to do it the way Sandra does it. And uh, I'll quickly explain to you. There are some people that actually like to put this into a plastic bag. And the moisture from the bag will actually uh, loosen up the skins. Sandra just likes to pull the, peel the skins right off, right after she's taken it off. So you can do it either way. You can either peel it off or you can put it in a plastic bag for a few minutes, like a grocery bag, come back, and then peel it off. So she's going to peel that off. Now while she peels that off, I want to show you. The trick with the, with the egg whites is like this. What you want, you want these to be very stiff. And she was telling me that the trick is that if you tip it over, now we've already been messing with it before, but if you tip it over, they won't fall out. So if you want to look at that, it's stiff peaks, almost like, basically like when you do a meringue. So that, that's ready now, and we're going to take, is, we're going to take these, right? Yeah. Now did you want to do any mixing or do you mix this part by hand? Uh, we do that with the blender. Okay, okay Farron wants to put in. Okay, so there, there's the four egg yolks. We're going to put those back in with the egg whites. And then about a tablespoon of flour, is that correct? Yeah. Okay, watch out, Karen. We're going to just take a tablespoon of our flour and put that back in with it. And then I'm going to stick it back on the blender. And how long do I need to do that for? Just for a just, couple of seconds. Just for a couple seconds. We're just trying to blend, it, blend up those yolks. Now it kind of resembles a lemon custard. It's light and fluffy and it's just a light yellow tint to it. And we'll put that in the sink. Okay, so that's ready. Let's go down the way. Farron's not only here, but he's here on his skateboard. Alright, I've got my flour here 
And the one thing I failed to mention, this is like the most basic chili serranos that there is. You're not, this, this is not, I mean there's so many variations and so many different things people will stuff into them. This is like the most traditional, most basic way that it's made. I've got some salt and some pepper, um, just a little bit, just to add a little flavor to the flour. And she's peeling those off. You got, you got a knife? Yeah. Okay, after those have been peeled off, do you have one that's ready yet? Yeah. Okay, let's just do the one that's ready. Okay, so she, after you, after you have done that step of peeling them, you have to slice them open. Now what she does, she just takes plastic bags. You could take a garbage bag. You could use just a little sandwich bag. She covers her hand with it. And that way, when she's pulling the seeds out, she doesn't have to worry about getting the, the, the heat from the seeds on her fingers. Some people like to use a latex glove. That's totally cool too, but we don't always have those handy, so we'll just use this. And then what she's doing is she's getting the seeds out of the inside of the chili. And does it have that much in it? Okay. Once that step has been completed, I'm going to get another plate. One more plate. Okay, we've got this peeled. Now the next step that we're going to do, we're going to put the cheese inside and we had a discussion about this beforehand, what she likes to use. She likes to use the queso fresco. I personally, uh, it doesn't really matter. It's just usually, it's typical to use some kind of a white melting cheese. Uh, Oaxaca, if you don't have that available to you, you could do a Monterey Jack or a mozzarella. And usually you're going to have that in a block form, but what I had in the fridge today was shredded. So we're just going to fill that up. And like I said, preferably you would want to have that in, cut it into some squares and stick it inside, but this will work just fine for today. And then after that, go ahead and show how that's done. She's just going to close it up with a toothpick. Now you'll want to remember... All right, this chili is ready. So I'm going to first dip it in my flour. And, you know... It is a little bit delicate and a little bit sensitive, so you have to be careful with them because you don't want to break open that where you've got the toothpicks. And then the next step that I'm going to do, I'm going to take it, should I use the spoon? Would that be better? I'm going to take it and I'm going to dip it in my egg mixture. And we want all of that batter to stick to our chili. Actually, let's see if I just get it in there better. Can you see what's going on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright, now if you don't have a fryer, those of you that watch my videos know that I do these kind of things with a fryer. If you don't have a fryer, then you're just going to uh, get a frying pan and fill it with some oil about halfway, probably uh, vegetable oil or canola. This wouldn't be one you'd want to use all olive oil on. Okay, so there's my chili. Now I'm just sticking my fryer. Now my fryer is at 350 degrees, and I'm just gonna, I have a little tray here. So I'm gonna set it on the tray, and then I'm just gonna drop it down in and it should be ready in just a minute. We can watch that. Done. It looks delicious. I think a lot of people are intimidated and they think that making this would be just too hard. The thing with Mexican food, it's not really hard to make, but it does take some time. And I know you can do this. I know that the Mexican in your life will love it. So give it a try and then let me know what you think. All right, we'll see you. Bye-bye. Right. And then we'll have a...